A month ago, we crossed the Rhine. I don't think that many of us who were in that crossing imagined that a month later we would still be fighting hard on the Elbe, many hundreds of miles to the east. Who would have imagined that the Nazis would force the German nation into what amounts to mass suicide? But standing here in the Nazi party meeting place in the little town of Buchholst, just south of Hamburg, you can easily see why the Nazis are acting as they are. If ever there was a nursery of fanaticism, here it is. This, to give it its official title, is the Hall of Honor of the National Socialist Party of the District of East Hanover. It's the most fantastic place I've entered for a long time. It's a modern building of neat red brick standing back from the road in the middle of a small garden, and it's not large, it's about the size of a village hall. But the extraordinary thing about it is that it's not the normal party meeting place. Rather, the whole thing has an almost blasphemous resemblance to a small church or a chapel. It's got stained glass windows. But the sun shines in through SS men and soldiers rather than saints. There's a pulpit here for the local party leader rather than for the minister. And the final blasphemy, where the altar lies in a church, there stands the life-size portrait of Hitler, flanked by none other than Himmler and Robert Ley. There's even a harmonium in the small gallery upstairs, although the sort of hymns that were played in it are hard to imagine. The whole place has the strained and furtive atmosphere of the meeting hall of a secret and fanatical cult. And you can easily imagine the local Gauleiter, whose portrait is everywhere on the walls with the inscription, To our beloved Staatsrat Telschau. And what a beauty he looks. Well, you can easily imagine him here haranguing his party members from the pulpit and whipping them up into a final state of frenzy. The people who built this hall, with its heavy, far too Germanic furniture, its over-rich decoration, its endless portraits in savage bad taste. These are the people who, inevitably, will not admit the failure of this cult. Who are going to pull them to make a grandiose exit from this... They've even got music for it already. Rummaging about in the basement, wheels of National Socialists, and with a gramophone slightly dusty from our shelling, all ready to play them on. Heavy, tramping, jackboot music it is. Well, there's only one thing to do with this poisonous place, the nursery of the fanatics who are still costing the lives of our British soldiers one month after we'd smashed the last defences of Germany, General Commanding the 7th Armoured Division. Boarding, this place is going to join the rest of the strong points in which the Nazis are still resisting. It's going to be blown sky high. 